Here's my mittens right here. This is my first product. What? So beautiful, sick. That's my first product. So yeah, I was like, I have to make these and I launched, I made them just in time. I launched at beauty. So you really wrote it out to the end, you know? Oh yeah, it's a very, very end. Hell, I was still dancing now. Somebody called me for the right check. <laughs> My friend actually. I wanted called. to tell you one of my favorite videos from you is um, Amarian's Entourage. And do you remember the shirt he had with all the crystals on it with the crown? It was a t shirt? Yeah, and he's wearing it in the video and it had like all the crystallized. Uh oh, my brother made that for him and sent it from London. Are you serious? I swear to you. So I'm you're like also married to the legendary R&B singer Tank, who is such a phenomenal talent. How does he inspire you? He knows how to go to the post office. He does. <laughs> the office, you know. And if, if your packages are late, blame Tank. Don't blame me. <laughs> he blame Tank if your packages are late. <laughs>Yeah. Like, okay, I can't afford both right now. So which one do you want to do? And my sister chose karate and I, I think she chose karate and I chose dance. And I was like, you know, I'll stick with this and thank God I stuck with it. Right? <laughs> it worked out. That's so it worked, it worked out in my favor. Um so I I was dancing in St. I'm originally from St. Louis, Missouri, from the Midwest. So I was I was dancing, doing it. Honestly, my mom had me in so much stuff, doing as much as I could. And I was in a dance <laughs> academy back at home. Wow. And when I was a senior in high school, we got an NFL team, uh, St. Louis Rams. Nice. And so they opened the auditions to girls 18 and older. And thankfully, I was older in my class. So I auditioned when I was a senior in high school. So I made the, the professional NFL team when I was a senior. Hey. In high school. I would literally go from like, high school to Tuesday and Thursday nights rehearsal at the dome like it was, it, was, it was a really really cool experience but <laughs> the team sucked at the time and we worked our asses off and didn't really get paid and I was like well wait a minute all this time I'm putting <laughs> in, my check is not looking nice <laughs> and I was like, I have like you know a part-time job mm -hmm. so I ended up um I was inquiring about the professional dancers in Los Angeles at the time. Yep. And so one of my girlfriends who was on the, on the cheerleading team with me, her sister was a professional dancer in LA. She was a Clippers cheerleader. Wow. She was on tour with Earth, Wind & Fire and with Vic. Brian Knight at the nice. time. And so I was like, okay, you know what? I was like, well, let's take a trip to LA and just see, see the vibe. Let's just see how it is. So we, her and I went out there or came out here and um, just was around the business for like a week and just kind of like, shadowed and went to auditions and just, yep. just to feel it out and I was like you know what? LA might be the place for me and yeah. I was like that's, <laughs> you know when I was asking like, the income and how much you had to do and all that I was like damn that sounds exciting let me figure this out so I hustled my ass off I quit NFL cheerleading I only did it for one year I ended up working like two jobs so I could afford to move myself to LA to become right. a professional dancer moved to LA I got an agent Thankfully, I got an agent at the yep. beginning of my career because it's really hard to get a dance agent in Los yeah. Angeles when you're first starting mm -hmm. and nobody knew me. So, you know, it's just all about who you know and showing, yep. you know, creating those relationships. Yeah. And thank God it all worked out. And then I was, you know, dancing and shoot, I was dancing until I moved here in 99 and I was dancing up until I found out I was pregnant with my son. And at oh, that point, wow. with Jamie Foxx at that time, 
And I was like, okay, I can only make this work for a couple more months <laughs> before I start showing. So I finished out that tour and then had my son and I was like, I'm done with dancing. And then my friend called me to do the voice with Christina Aguilera. Nice. Okay, I got more in me. <laughs> so I went and did that job. And after that, I was like, yeah, I'm done. I'm oh done. man, you see, you really wrote it out to the end, you know? Oh yeah, it's a very, very end. Hell, I was still dancing now. Somebody called me for the right check. <laughs> My friend actually called me a little while ago. I used to be on, on tour with Pleasure P. And nice. he was like, hey, I'm going back out on tour. You know, I got to call the OGs first. He's like, yeah. do you want the job? And I was like, mm, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to work. <laughs> I'm going to pass on that one. <laughs> that was so funny, man. I wanted to tell you, one of my favorite videos from you is um, Amarian's Entourage. And do you remember the shirt he had with all the crystals on it with the crown? Crystals with the crown. Was it a t-shirt? Yeah, and he's wearing it in the video and it had like all the crystallized Oh, My brother made that for him and sent it from London. Are you serious? I swear to you, I was like 10 and I was like, oh my gosh, tell Amari and I said hi. And he was like, hey Anita, what's up? <laughs> oh my God, that's awesome. That is so sick. So we're connected from then, you know? <laughs> that's my favorite. That's funny, that is funny. <laughs> so sick. So now that Xena Posta Beauty is here, what made you want to transition into starting your own beauty company? And how did you come up with ideas for your first products? So for me to start Zena Foster Beauty, honestly, I needed a plan B after dancing because I was like, I can't, <laughs> I need something Love else. Dancing. But I also need, I need to work from home. I need a business from home because yeah. I can't imagine myself going to work for anybody else. I'm a control freak. <laughs> I like to have my schedule. My yeah. husband is super busy. He's on the road. Mm -hmm. I didn't want somebody else raising my kids. So I just yeah. wanted to be able to do something from home. And I honestly, I grew up in the beauty business. My mom's a hairstylist. She's been a hairstylist all of her life since she graduated uh -huh. high school. So um, beauty's always like the beauty bug has always been with me, to be honest. Like yeah. I grew up in a hair salon. I would skip school and she's like, okay, well, if you're not going to go to school, then you need to come to the salon, <laughs> old towel, sweep up hair, <laughs> you know what I, I mean? Like, come up. so I was like, this is a really cool industry to be in. Yeah. And even being out here in LA, being a dancer, I end up getting a lot of modeling jobs as far yeah. as like hair, makeup, things like that. So I was like, this is a really cool business. So, you know, I just try to figure out a way that I could get into the beauty business and create my own lane. Um, I was introduced to a Korean spa. I don't know if you all have Korean spas there. Um, a few, I think so. <laughs> You've never been to one? Huh? Never been. <laughs> you gotta go. So I got my girlfriend's um, put me onto the Korean spa as a Mother's Day gift one time. And they're like, have you been to the Korean spa? And I said, no, but I'm a spa girl. I love yeah. the spa. So I went for a Mother's Day and they're like, you got to get a body scrub. I was like, what is a body scrub? Like I exfoliate all the time. I've been an exfoliating girl, like, you know, getting little gloves, whatever. Yeah. So I've always exfoliated. They're like, no, a Korean body scrub is different than a regular scrub. So what? I went to Korean scrub and my life changed forever. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> So, you know, I was like, I got to go, I got to get this in once a month because yeah. you, literally your skin looks refreshed and polished. And it's like, you have a new layer of skin exposed the moment that you walk out. And I was like, damn, I need to be able to do this at home. I can't drive all the way to the Korean spa and mm -hmm. take a whole day out of my time to do this. I was like, how can I do, you know, how can I create this on my own? Yeah. So I started looking into manufacturers and names and products and all kinds of stuff, just researching it. And I was like, yeah. I'm going to make my own line. And so that was my first here's my mittens right here this is my first what? product so beautiful sick <laughs> that's my first product so yeah I was like I have to make these and I launched I made them just in time I launched at BeautyCon which BeautyCon in the states is a huge thing yep um, it up. and I launched at the BeautyCon in New York City and I wow. made um, People Magazine's top 10 breaking into the beauty business with my mittens wow okay people really like these yeah <laughs> they really like these so I just started there and my mittens were a hit for about a year and a half to two years, mm -hmm. almost two years. And then I incorporated facial rollers because I'm all at the end of the day, I'm all about, I'm all about beauty. Like I love, I love the beauty business, mm -hmm. but I'm not necessarily the makeup girl. I love I makeup. You. I love someone to do my makeup. I yeah. love a face from time to time, but I don't walk around every day with the face. I you know you. what I mean? So Back. I'm like, well, I just need to make sure that I have good skin. Yeah. And I need to glow. So <laughs> that's how I got into my beauty bars. And I was like, okay, now I'm going to incorporate these. And my next step, 
my next step for my business is I really want to do a skincare line because I'm totally nice. into music. I'm a product whore. I have yep. so many products in my bathroom. <laughs> Same as me. <laughs> so many brands are sending me products to test out all the time. And I'm just like, oh God, this is overwhelming. And I'm like, right. I need my own. I need. I got to do this for myself. I love that, Zena. And you've inspired me to want to go to the Korean beauty spa now. Like, what is there that I'm not getting? <laughs> oh, you definitely have to. You definitely have to. Amazing. What would you say is the hardest part about running your own business? And then also, what do you love the most about it? The hardest part about running my own business mm. is, honestly, I do everything. I'm a home-based business. So my office, my fulfillment center, everything is here out of yep. my garage and my guest room. I've taken over my guest room as my office. <laughs> so I do it all. I, you know, I promote, uh, thankfully I have an assistant that saves my life. Like yep. she stepped in and she saves me. So her and I run Dina Foster Beauty all on our own. But as far as like hands-on, like, you know, we do the emailing, we do the promotions, the email mm -hmm. blast, um, the fulfillment orders, mm -hmm. community, uh, customer service. Like when I tell you the pettiness that comes behind customer service, what? <laughs> it's crazy. I was like, yo, I'm, I, I like to pride myself on being a great customer for people yeah. because, yeah. you know, we, there is COVID right now. It's a pandemic. <laughs> And people are stressing about their orders because the they for three days. And I'm like, have you guys not seen the news? Like, Stop it. <laughs> like, these packages, I, I, I did my job. Yeah, I'm not the postman. Follow, I will follow your tracking till the end, but I cannot make them deliver to you any faster than what it's supposed to get there. Oh, man. So that part is a little bit stressful. And yeah. sometimes. I have to tell my sister, I'm like, hey, can you shoot them an email? Because if I say how I'm going to say it, no. <laughs> they might not be a return customer. So I definitely, I got to learn the better part of customer service. Hey. Because I'm a straightforward person, no hold bar. So when I type, it sounds like that. So I got to get a little bit better about that. But other than that, <laughs> um, it's fun. It's great. It's just, I'm learning so much about it. Running a business is expensive as fuck. And yeah. like, no, understands nobody understands the things that go behind it like all these tax papers that I'm getting all these things that I'm having to pay it's like it's so just accounts just a MailChimp account to be able to email blast my customers and tell them about a sale going on yeah. Every transaction that comes through you're having to pay for my labeling my bubble yeah. mail you know and it's I didn't know this part of it when I got into the business. And now yeah. that I was like, okay, well, what am I paying this month? Do I need this app to make these pictures look better? How much is that? $5.99? I said, I got all these $5.99s every it month. Adds up. It adds up. Like adding up. And nobody tells you that when you're starting out as yeah. an entrepreneur. So honestly, it's very hands-on. It's fun though. It's challenging, but fun. And I'm learning a lot because I plan to be huge. So it's like, I'm a hands-on person. I don't want nobody doing it for me. I got to yeah. know what's going on. Yeah. And you feel so much better when you know that like everything is up to your standard yeah. and you go to sleep thinking, yeah, everything's handled today. I saw it instead of letting somebody else see it. And you was like, you told me that was handled, you know, as long as you see it, you know, it's good. Yep. <laughs> Do you have any advice or business tips for budding new entrepreneurs when they're creating their own new brand? Honestly, I say go what's go with what's personal to you like mm. always you know people come to me and they'll be like oh you know your products are so dope but everything is just black and white well first of all i'm black and white second of all my color scheme my mood my branding is black and white because i don't yeah. want to just i don't want to add in a hot pink yeah because i want my brands to go all the way across the board my you know my products are for men and women mm. i don't want a male to be like oh, I got a pink exfoliating mitten in my shower. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, I hear you. And I'm like, you know, people have their suggestions, but at the end of the day, I'm, my brand represents me to the yeah. fullest. And I would just say, go, you know, go with, go with your gut feelings. Stick mm. with, stick with what you like. Stick with why you started it. Stick go, with why you started. Yeah, stick with why you started. Don't let people feed in. I mean, it's great to take advice from others, mm -hmm. but stay in your lane. <laughs> ah, stay in your lane stick with what you know and yeah I love that I never knew your products were unisex so I learned something new today incredible I have so, so many customers are like you know I gotta I gotta order another pair of mittens because my husband I caught my husband using <laughs> my and he could just keep it no way that's sick <laughs> 
I love that. So your products are liked and loved by the likes of Kim Kardashian. Just got a special delivery from Zena Foster Beauty. And you guys know that I already love her um, polished these mitts. Like I'm getting a spray tan soon and I'll use these just to exfoliate skin. I'm obsessed with those. And Jasmine Saunders. I don't know. I don't understand what's going on. I am so confused. I'm worried. And they were recently featured by Kourtney Kardashian as a poosh favorite on her website. Why do you think your products are loved by so many? And which one would you recommend our listeners to try first? Honestly, the, I feel like they're recommended by so many because they actually work. And you can <laughs> you see the results right away. You see yeah. immediate results. And with the exfoliating mittens, you can literally see your skin on the glove after you scrub. And you're like, oh, shit, that came off of me? Okay, well, I'm going to keep this up. Right. You know, it's instant gratification. So I feel like you know, that's what works. Um, and sorry, what was the other question you asked me? And then what would you recommend our listeners to try first? Do you have a favorite product in your line? I love them all, but I would I would say definitely start with the exfoliating mitten. Yeah. I, you know, I push those the most because they're my baby. It's my it's my first product, but they work, they work so good. <laughs> and people don't understand how much how much that you're putting onto your skin on a daily basis, mm. whether it's body oils or lotions, yeah. creams, things like that. And it's very heavy and it gets mm -hmm. into your pores and just a regular soap and a washcloth is not going to get that I off. The it, yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I love that. And what does self-care mean to you? And what do you do to indulge in it? Uh, self-care to me means coming in my bathroom, closing yep. the door, not having nobody bother me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a little bit of quiet time at home. Yeah. Normally I would hit the spa, but you know, right now we can't go nowhere. Right. So my line is perfect for at-home self-care. And I feel like that's going to be the new normal, the new spa. Yeah. Okay. And you know, I take the longest showers in the world. Like Same. My husband, <laughs> no, I'll tell him, I'm like, babe, I got to shave and wash my hair and scrub. So you already know, hold the kids down. He knows I'm going to be in the bathroom like a good hour because I have a whole lineup I do. It's a whole step <laughs> process that I do. And, you know, I try to get that in at least once a week, if not once every two weeks, if I can. Yeah. And um, I have so many face products, like tool, like different beauty tools and things like that. Like, to me, that's self-care. Anything that's going to make me feel better, anything that's going to make me feel healthier about myself or, okay. you know, good choices for skincare and things like yeah. that. Like anything that I'm noticing a difference with, I'm just going to keep on keeping it up. I love that. Self-care is so important. And with the interesting world that we're currently living in regarding the pandemic, do you have any words of wisdom to anybody struggling with either their mental or physical self-care during this time? Honestly, I, hell, I even struggle with self-care mm -hmm. <laughs> during this time. It's really hard. You know, I have yeah. two kids at home, uh, two kids at home that are online on on doing school. Like I'm literally a teacher, a mom, a chef, a maid. Like I'm doing it all, and it's wow. it's really hard. It's very hard. So, you know, if you can take the time, if you can even just take the time, like 30 minutes at night before you go to bed, if you're yeah. you know, a working mom and you can get the kids down. Just take those 30 minutes and just take it to yourself. If it's having mm -hmm. a glass of wine in the bathtub, if that's what you got to do, do it because you'll you'll appreciate it and you got to take care of you before you can take care of anybody else. I love it. That's beautiful. And it's so true. You can't pour from an empty cup. So when you're your best self, you can give your best self. Yeah. Great advice, Zena. So you're also married to the legendary R&B singer Tank, who is such a phenomenal talent. How does he inspire you in your own separate endeavors? And has he given you any business advice? He always calls himself giving me business advice. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He's so mad at me right now that I haven't produced my beauty line yet. And I'm like, I know I'm going to get to it. I'm like, I'm doing a thousand other things. I just it. Moment, but I'm going to get to it. He's honestly, he's my number one cheerleader. Like amazing. He supports me so much. Hell, he's my personal assistant. He's in the office. Sometimes, you know, when he'll help me pack orders, we share a lot of the responsibility during the house, you know, within the household. So I'm like, Hey babe, can you drop my orders for me today? He knows the deal. He knows how to go to the post office. He does. <laughs> You know, and if, if your packages are late, blame Tank. Don't blame me. <laughs> he I inspire. Too. Blame Tank if your packages are late. <laughs> yeah. So, um, no, he's just, he's very, very, you know, he, he's good. He's great. And he's so, so supportive. I love it. I absolutely love it. 
We love a supportive husband. That is amazing. And I love your show on YouTube, Babs to the Bone. Are you guys going to continue with that? I've literally seen like so many episodes. It's so funny. <laughs> Yeah, we do plan to continue because nothing here is open. We've just been stuck in the house. You know, my kids, sometimes they're good with the camera, sometimes they're not. And we just have so much going on once school started. It was hard to kind of keep up that schedule. Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely the summer. We plan on hopefully bringing it back by the summer. We ha I, I got to get a little bit more better about posting like on our Instagram for Babs to the Ball. I hate you. I got to get better about that. I love it. Like I remember watching it one time and my sister walked in and she was like, is that a professional show on BET? And I was like, no, it's on YouTube. She was like, that show like, is so clear cut. <laughs> it's crystal clear. No, we have a, we had a great videographer. Super good. Super talented. Love it. You guys are killing it. You're killing it. I was like, I want this shit to look real. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You're going to be the next keeping up with the Kardashians. <laughs> it's so fire. So moving forward with Xena Foster Beauty, you currently have your super popular exfoliating mittens, your face and body massager and your Sonic Gold Beauty Bar. Like you mentioned earlier, you're going to be adding more products and what more can we expect from you and your brand? Honestly, I gotta, I gotta get in, get in with the chemist and do this uh, Zena Foster Beauty line. I have to do a skincare line because I don't want to private label it. I really want to get in there with the chemist, hands on, create yep. it myself. Yeah. Uh, because I want to be responsible for it. You know, I don't want somebody saying, "Oh, hey, just use this." No, I want to know what I'm using. I want to know what you're putting on your skin, what you're putting on your face. Yeah. How so that is my next ultimate goal. And I plan on starting that as soon as possible. And I can't wait to get that together and launch it. Cause I think I love that. it's going to be big. Yeah. I love that you're so hands-on and you really care about what's going out to your customers. You know, it's really important. Yeah. I'm Libra girl. We're a control freak. <laughs> you're so funny. <laughs> So with the dynamic career that you've had, transitioning from being an amazing professional dancer and you now own your own beauty company, what does it mean to you to truly give your all or nothing? Go hard or go home. Because if go you're going to do it, you got to do it all the way. Right? And, you know, at first I was a little like tiptoeing, like, okay, I'm just going to do this and just mm -hmm. test it out. And now I'm in it. And now I have so many eyes on my brand. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I got to bring them something because they're going to be expecting that So yeah pushing myself every day you know to be productive to to work on my line to you know get the word out there to try to get into these huge into these huge beauty stores because yeah. you know i'm selling on commerce on a few different sites um i have a few spas that are actually carrying my product i love that Zena. it sounds incredible and yeah you're doing so well i can't wait to try your products and you're killing okay. it girl thank you you are more than welcome. Thank you so much for your time today. And I will leave you. I hope you get some self care in. <laughs> yeah, it's Friday. We're taking the day off after this. <laughs> so funny. Bye, Zena. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>